let rule motion. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I bring this 10-minute rule bill for a number of reasons. I do not count myself as a forthright animal rights activist, but I do count myself as a common sense activist. That said, there are many reasons why we should all have concerns that any act of animal transportation that imposes stress and unnecessary suffering when the most logical answer is local slaughter and then refrigerated transport of carcasses to their destination. This bill does not seek to change the law in the transportation of live animals for breeding or other aspects of animal husbandry, merely to allow the discretion for local authorities to decide in the spirit of localism as to whether facilities that they own should be used to facilitate transport for slaughter abroad. In short, this bill uh, seeks to make due amendment to section 33 of the Harbours, Docks and Piers Clauses Act of 1847 to al allow local authority controlled ports to prescribe at their discretion the transport of animals for slaughter abroad. Now the primary reason for my interest in this matter is a very local one to my constituency of South Thanet, where we have the active port of Ramsgate. It's on a long-term lease from the Crown Estate, with all port operations being controlled and invoiced by the local authority of Thanet District Council. Following pressure from a shipper, the council acquiesced to legal threats and demands that the port be made available for small vessel uh, roll and roll off operations of just a few lorries carrying livestock. And the first such shipment happened on 18th of May 2011. Now, not surprisingly, the transportation attracted huge amounts of local opposition and more active campaigning by Kent wide animal rights activists. The police cost to marshal such shipments is estimated at £18,000 per time. Massively more perhaps by a factor of 10 more than the likely profit arising to the shipper. Now these regular shipments continued to local opposition until I think we can only describe as a truly appalling event that occurred on the 12th of September 2012. A lorry was loaded with 548 sheep over three tiers. The Animal Health and Veterinary Laboratories Agency were on site and discovered that the lorry had been poorly loaded and was massively overstocked. One sheep had a broken leg, others were lame and had trapped limbs. The sheep were ordered to be unloaded and I will quote what happened next. The scene from a witness and I quote, all hell let loose with nearly 20 people made up of RSPCA, AHVLA, that's the Veterinary Association, police and port staff, some with camera in hand and a paint sprayer in the other, chasing over 500 sheep uh, around and apparently trying to find lame ones. In fact, it was the chasing on the unsuitable surface that was causing the lameness. During the chase, six lambs went into the water, resulting in four being rescued by the RSPCA and two being found dead. Later on that day, some 13 hours later after the arrival of Kent Trading Standards and news crews, a, fur a further 37 sheep were identified as lame and were euthanized on site, following a, or euthanized on site, following a second unloading after sheep were again found to have trapped limbs. It was described by local press as simply a massacre. The day after, Thanet District Council decided unilaterally to suspend any further live animal shipments through Ramsgate. This decision was supported by the wider council across all of the local political parties and, of course, by local residents. Legal fears were brought to bear and shipments resumed again a little over a month after on the 19th of October 2012, following a grant of interim relief in the High Court. The shippers then entered the legal fray over a very protracted period, resulting in a High Court judgment on the 27th of February 2014, following a four-day hearing in December 2013. And at that hearing, Thanet District Council relied heavily on Section 40 of the Harbours Act 1964, which does offer some discretion as to port use. 
Unfortunately, the judgment went against Standard District Council because primarily of Section 33 of the Harbours, Docks and Piers Clauses Act. And it states, shall be open to all persons for the shipping and unshipping of goods. And that's what I'm seeking to change by this bill. The result of that adverse judgment has left local taxpayers with a compensation bill and costs in excess of four million pounds. It's not a large authority. And a resumption of trade that nobody wants through a port that's unsuitable with local residents appalled that it is their port that's now being used for a trade that they find both unnecessary and many find distinctly abhorrent. And this is the nub of my 10 minute rule bill. In the true spirit of localism, a long overdue amendment to the 1847 Act would give a greater degree of certainty to local authorities uh, so that in future they may not face this type of legal action and that they could oppose the use of their municipally operated facilities for such transactions. But of course, if life were only that simple, if only this House were sovereign and able that an amendment that I might put forward and taken forward through this House uh, were to be accepted, that would be the end of the matter. But unfortunately, there is the big boot of the EU to consider under the protection of free trade and free movement of goods provided by Article 35 on the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union. And that's been further added to over the years by European court judgments, notably Krankovic in 1991, and the Lord's factor tame case of 2001. And drawing to a close, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm seeking this House's leave to advance this bill to its next stage, and for an alteration to domestic law to prescribe such trade in the circumstances that clearly apply to Ramsgate and to Thanet District Council, who controls that port. And that could be brought forward under the assumption that this Parliament is sovereign to do so. Now, part of the High Court's judgment on this case, uh, the conclusion was rather instructive and I feel quite alarming. And I'll quote the judge's words. And he quotes, The law does not exist only to protect the interests of the popular. And I say that this is entirely the foundation of our democracy. The arguments about the intervention of EU law in this area uh, is not an argument for today from me, it is an argument for another day, and possibly 23rd of June may be that time. And on this basis, Madam Deputy Speaker, I commend this bill to the House. Yeah.